I'd like to talk a little bit about the audience for these sorts of things. I mean, we live in a world where IMDb had to change its rules uh, because before Captain Marvel had even come out, so many 4 yeah, chan yeah. dude bros mm-hmm. had decided that they couldn't stand the concept of a, a strong, independent woman superhero. Mm-hmm. Fictional character. Right. By the way, yeah. or you know, where it turns out it was apparently not just that funny of a movie, but everybody was just ready to hate the concept of female Ghostbusters, uh, to say nothing of a of a Black Mermaid. But that's a that's yes. a separate whole topic for thing. a yeah. whole other day. And and I I apologize if this is uncouth of me to mention on air, uh, but I'll let y'all know since you don't. We're getting calls today. There are people calling into the studio, but we haven't taken any of them because the call screener and I have been communicating about how many of them are trolls, perhaps offended by the fact that here we are talking about women getting up on stage and being in comedy. We talked before the show about how there is a a, a troll culture and and how there's something of of a target on your back when you mention certain items that just offend people, whether it is, you know, ethics in gaming journalism, whether it is the idea of a woman daring to pretend to know or understand how to write about video games, uh, (laughs) or daring to to stand on stage and and try to be funny. And I I guess I wonder what it's like just existing. I I don't ask for a simple (laughs) answer to that, but how do you be? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, at times it can be a, a little rough. Like, I, I haven't had too many, like, terrible experiences. Like I said, I did have, um, t- so, the, get back to earlier that joke I had about, like, seeing a comedian, uh, someone do coke in front of me. It was another, like, comedian. And when I told that joke, I didn't use his name on stage or anything. But mm-hmm. afterwards, people were like, hey, you need to stop telling that joke. That dude's going to, like, be, like, super pissed and, like, like he thinks you're like talking shit about him and I'm like bruh I'm like a 19 year old girl I didn't say your name yeah if he outed himself like you were doing you were doing coke out of an Altoids tin in front of Spider House like how can you like (laughs) um it's yeah it's definitely like dudes are I don't want to say like fragile but like like they have like fragile ass egos and it's like not obviously like not all men right but like still it's hard like even like within the comedy scene and like audiences and stuff like my I have like non-comedians like added on Facebook and stuff and like Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll like share something and they'll be like oh well like you know what about this or like you know like devil's advocate (laughs) and shit and I'm like okay but that's not what this is about like right I and also even like if I'm being funny like there was um an incident that happened in the comedy scene and I like tweeted out as like a joke. I was like, next time you're considering hiring uh, or booking a white cis male comedian, pick literally anyone else. I remember (laughs) reading that. (laughs) And, um... People came after you. Yeah. And I was like, okay, first of all, I wasn't even like, I wasn't completely serious. Like, it was a joke. But like, afterwards I was thinking about it, I was like, fuck, if that's all y'all are gonna act, like, then fine, I won't book you Mm -hmm. but like like i was saying i always like i like in the future if i i do keep booking shows and stuff i would like to have you know at least one token dude and like like i said it's not all dudes there are some wonderful comedians um shout out to wes and blake um but like i yeah it's it's hard like having these like toxic people on the internet and stuff like just being like oh well you can't like say this and you can't do that or you that's a bad take on it and it's like it's not it's it's life it's real and it's what's happening and we shouldn't be forced to like share the same spaces as like abusers and stuff Mm because it's shitty and Again, I wasn't even saying, like, all, like, male comedians, but, like, a majority of them, like, have, like, are just, like, really sensitive and, like, have, like, awkward social skills and stuff. So it's, like, it it can be uncomfortable and, like, I don't, I don't know. It's just, like, it's hard to, like, I guess take them seriously (laughs) Mm. because like part of me is just like oh just like fuck this like I'm just gonna do my own thing and then part of me is like well this sucks like they're not gonna like 
my comedy and I'm like, oh, well, I guess they don't really matter. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, same goes with like, I think if it's like an audience or just like random troll, like it, it just like at the end of the day, like they're not gonna like physically hurt me. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds like a, a pretty exhausting place to be, male or female, getting up on stage. Uh, I guess my, my final question for you tonight is, why? <laughs> you know, what do, what do you love about it? I mean, what is it that... Attention. I, I feel like... Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe that, but I mean, I comedy is one of those things that I feel like every drunk asshole in their third beer is like, I can do that shit. Yeah. Uh, but nobody ever actually stands up and does. Yeah, or when they do, it's bad. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's like my favorite thing when like drunk people at the bar are like, I can be funnier than that guy, and then they get up and then they just like flounder around and like then they like tell some like old like Seth Rogen joke or something mm -hmm. um, but yeah no I think it's it's the feeling you get when you have like a really really good set and people are like funny and they're coming up to you afterwards and it makes you feel like a mini celebrity and it's like <laughs> um like I did that show last month uh and it was like my first showcase and afterwards this lady asked to follow me on Twitter and I thought that was like the most <laughs> the hugest Aww. thing ever I was like oh my gosh this is the 2019 equivalent of asking for my autograph <laughs> like, <laughs> um and I was like damn my first like comedy Twitter follower and like like it's it's such a great feeling and like it's it sounds like so narcissistic to say but like just like the thrill of like people like laughing at you and clapping and having it be a positive thing um same reason i did rocky same yeah like it's it's, to yeah. remind folks, you uh, <laughs> were introduced to our show uh, working with the uh, we're working with a shadow cast to perform the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to O'Brien's orchestra. I keep saying shout out to people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's that like that thrill of performing, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's like really satisfying, and I I don't think like there's ever going to be, be a point in my life where I am not some kind of performer. Mm. Um, I don't know if like I'm always going to be doing like stand-up comedy. Like I said, I, I do like hope one day I can like transition into sketch comedy. Um, this whole podcast thing has been working out pretty great for me. <laughs> um, uh, I love memes. Like, like it's like the same like feeling, like, I don't know, just like a weird like dopamine, I guess. It's <laughs> just like, sure. yeah, it's like, but I think like having a really good set and having a people having people like share for you is like better than like a thousand likes on Facebook. It's like in person likes. <laughs> that might be the most millennial sentence I've Sorry. ever heard in my life. Oh, uh, I guess I'm just gonna go home and be the oldest person in the world now. I'm so sorry. Wow. Okay. Well. With that, I, uh, I suppose I, I'd love to just thank you so much for, for joining us again and to V for braving the studio and yeah. being a, a part of our conversation. <laughs> uh, to everybody who joined us tonight, I would love to hear from y'all about the, uh, the inspirational comedians uh, and uh, you know just the experience of uh, increasingly seeing visibility, of seeing more women in front of and behind a camera doing more than just, you know, pouring drinks for the protagonist. Yeah. Uh, so with that, um, again, we'd love to keep the conversation going. Be sure to uh, to check out uh, Lana Del Comedy on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, feel free to shoot us an email. That's sex at atheist-community.org. And until then, we'll plan on, on seeing you next week. But for now, we would like to encourage you to um, go home and, and give yourself a, a big old orgasm. Or, better yet, give somebody else one. <laughs> Consensually. <laughs>